That's what we need to be praying for. That people wake up and go to a Bible believing. It doesn't have to be this church. Go to a Bible believing church. Maybe this is where you fit, maybe it isn't. But I'll tell you now, you need to be in the body of Christ. You need that encouragement. We need to know, and it starts in Jerusalem. When Jesus gave the Great Commission, he said to Jerusalem, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts. We think of all the people around the world, and that's great, but what about where you live? And when we fast, it brings the power of God down on our behalf. And then number two, fasting is the grace of God. How many of you know really what it's saying? At that very moment, we are saying, I want your will greater than I want my will. Because how many of you know my flesh? I mean, I've said before, but it's so true. They call it fasting. It's the slowest thing I've ever did. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but it doesn't go fast the first few days. My flesh doesn't like it. But how many of you know, sometimes I got to look in the mirror and say, too bad you don't like it. Because I mean, you know, I'll tell you one thing, after the first three days, man, you're into it. There's, there's a discipline that comes after the third day, man, when you really, I mean, when I, when I, I realized it was the grace of God, I remember when I first got saved at 27, about a year later, the pastor then called our church to a fast, and, and I was young, and I was exuberant, and I was excited, so I said, man, I'm going to fast with everybody all week long, every day, and work, and people said, what about work? I said, oh, it doesn't matter, man, I'm going to fast. I didn't even hardly drink water. I lost 15 pounds. And at that time, I only weighed 175 pounds. When I got on the scale, my britches were about ready to fall off if I didn't have a good belt on. That's not what I'm talking about. Because truthfully, in a lot of ways, I didn't realize it. I was excited, but I was doing it out of the flesh. I mean, I prayed a little different, I learned some things, but how many of you know, I'm not talking about crash fasting. Now, God has done a few things like that over my life where he calls me to something like that, but that's an extreme case. Most of the time, it's to give something up. And actually, fasting literally means to cover one's mouth. But it's the grace of God. How many of you know that when you begin to fast, the Holy Spirit will show up to help you? <clears throat> when you really say, God, I don't, because isn't that really what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do anyway? The Word says He's a helper that comes alongside. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's always uh, the blessing to do that. But how many of you know, detoxing of your body is one of the greatest things that happens in the natural realm. And when you give certain things up, you detox your body. And how many of you know that's good for you? Yes. Now, I want to tell you, it's, it's kind of like I've, I've never been... I've never really had a lot of addictions in my life. I've never really smoked or drank or did drugs much. much. I've never done drugs, but <laughs> like I said, I had a friend that did drugs and, you know, I was too active when I was young and he was a pot smoker and I'll never forget he, I would say, we're going to go fishing tomorrow and he would say, oh yeah, man, really, I want to go and I said, okay, I'll pick you up at five. I'd bang on the door and bang on the door and he'd never get up. You know, he had all these grand ideas. That's why I hate pot. I mean, I really do, because it does nothing but zap your strength. I mean, you'll get all these wild ideas, but you won't have the energy to get any of them done. Just sit there and eat your brownies, you know what I mean? Just Come on, church. This is where we live. And I said back then, man, I, I don't need drugs, man. I like to do things. I mean, I'm a doer, not a hearer. Only, I mean, I, I want to experience life in myself and, and have that anointing. But literally, it, the grace of God is when, you know, you don't always have the strength in yourself, but the power of God comes. And it's not anything we manipulate, but it's because we say, God, only you can give us that grace and the Holy Spirit will help. And how many of you know, after the third day, you might even have a headache. Because, I mean, like I said, I've never had many addictions, but I know I've, I've had people 
say things like to me, you know, well, man, I, I get headaches when I fast. And yeah, I, there's some detoxing going on in your body. I mean, you know, if I don't have coffee for one day, I'm a wreck. Yes, amen. Anybody say hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah you, can, you can say amen to that. Uh, but really, the real addictions to life is really understanding that you're not have the strength always to do it in yourself, so you have to give it to God. But the Holy Spirit will help you. How many of you know you don't have to go through this alone? And, and really, the amazing thing is, I mean, there will be some things happen super, supernaturally, but even I've had people say, well, I had somebody say to me not too long ago, I've never been a smoker, but, but they smoked for years, and then they got saved, and a few years later they gave it up, and I don't... I said, I don't think smoking will send you to hell. I really don't. It just makes you smell like you've already been there. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's tough, but it's true. I mean, but at the same time, <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> everybody say, I love pastor. Hallelujah. Uh, but I had somebody say to me not too long ago, I said, every now and then I'll be somewhere where somebody has a cigarette and I smell that smoke. And I, like, remember back how it used to be really good after a meal. And I'm like, oh, puke, you know, really. I mean, <laughs> I can't even imagine that. But I do know how powerful the memory is. Yes. Do you know smell is the most powerful sense that you will have a memory? Not too long ago, I was standing, at, it was at night, and I was standing where they were unloading some trucks and I smelled diesel, and it literally took me back to Vietnam. Because I smelled the diesel, and I remember being on that gunboat, and then the tanks, and all the equipment, so much of them run off of diesel, that I remember that vividly, and I remember that's happened to me a number of times. So there'll, there'll be things maybe that come back to your memory, but how many of you know it's not a struggle, but you don't have to go back to the way you were. You have the grace of God and the Holy Spirit to help you. Everybody say the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So that anointing carries us. And then number three, fasting is humbling ourselves before God. It's saying, God, I can't do it on my own. I need you. Now, how many of you know to need someone in our society today is a form of weakness? In God's kingdom, that's the greatest power. Because we realize that, you know, we can't do it without God. We can't do it without Him. And, and it really says to God, I need you. I can't do it on my own. And how many of you know, when you show, do that, the power of God shows up in your life. Because you can't do it on your own. I want to tell you, you don't have the strength in yourself. The power of God and the anointing of God can help you walk through what you go through. And fourthly, fasting is an act of worship. Everybody say worship. worship. Now, how many of you know it doesn't mean you have music always playing or you have songs, that your favorite songs that you sing. But how many, in fact, we're, we're all like this. Uh, how many of you know that really it is a form of worship, though? And I, I was getting ready this morning for church, and, and uh, Pastor Sandy always puts her iPod pot on, and we put this music on. And, and, you know, I'm singing in the shower and I'm getting ready. And I can, how many of you know that we're really creatures of habit? Yes. Amen. Have you ever noticed that? Yes. Do you know that I guarantee you, 99% of you, when you take a shower, you wash and do exactly the same thing every time. Yes. Amen. If you start with an armpit, you start with an armpit. Yes. If you start with your face, you start with your face. I mean, you will do that 90% of the time because it becomes a pattern. It becomes literally, you don't even think about what you're doing. You just get up and do it. Well, I can get ready in about 30 to 40 minutes max. I mean, so I get up, and Pastor Sandy usually gets up a little earlier, and, um, and she's got her music going. And, and so because it's the same time frame, and we start the music about the same time, how many of you know it's the same songs we're singing every week? <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? No, come on, don't look at me like that. So I said to her this morning, I said, honey, it's a new year. Let's put the iPad and the music, let's start it in a different spot. Because I'm tired of the same thing. 
You know, I mean, I, I want change. I, I want, ha you know, I, I think the greatest thing in the world is when God said change because I like change. I, I like doing new things. I like the challenge of, of going out there and seeing things I've never seen and conquering mountains I've never been. And I mean, when I'm up hunting, I never look for where I used to go. I always look for a new place. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? And I mean, I like new things. I, I like to, to be challenged. I mean, if you ever want to go anywhere and find new things, you need to go on vacation with Pastor Mike and Debbie. <laughs> Pastor Mike will know everything about where you're going, whether it's a Grand Canyon, New York City, or L.A. He will know every museum, every aircraft factory. I mean, it's amazing. Internet is a mess. You know what I'm talking about? It tells you everything about everything. But one of the greatest vacations Sandy and I ever had was when we took off. I had to be back in the east. And, and we took off. I, I was in Tennessee. And we decided we'd go to New York. Then we'd go down to Virginia. Then we'd go into the Carolinas. We'd do the Outer Banks. We'd come back in through the Carolinas. And we'd come back to Nashville and fly out. We didn't have a time schedule. How many of you know that was one of the greatest vacations I've ever had? Amen. And I mean, we just kind of took off and enjoyed life. And we stopped when we wanted and we went when we wanted. And I mean, I don't know how any of you, did anybody grow up in the East? Those toll roads, man, that's not fair. <laughs> they charge you just to drive on the road. I'm like, this is not fair. What do you mean I just paid you back there? <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, I've never seen anything like that in my life. But I like new things. How many of you know, I like new worship. I don't just like corporate worship. I want to worship God when I read the word. I want to worship God when I speak the word. I want to worship God when I fast. I believe it's a part of worship. It is one of the greatest things that we can have. Romans puts it this way. I beseech you, brother, before you, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, that's commonplace. It shouldn't be uncommon to desire to give God what He desires. And allow that to move in our... Can I get an amen in this sense? Yeah. And so, we have to understand fasting is one of the greatest powers we can ever have when we do for God. And then finally, fasting is a spiritual discipline that is a physical act. Everybody say physical act. But you have to go in this with a spiritual mindset. Yes, you're going to discipline your body. Yes, you're going to not take things in that you would really normally take in. But how many of you know it's a physical act, but it's a spiritual experience? In fact, the Bible in fasting tells us that when we give up food, we move the heart of God. Literally, we move the heart of God by saying, I'm giving this up, not for myself, but I'm doing it for you. How many of you know, when we move the heart of God, that's when things really change in our life. And I don't know about you, I need things changed periodically in my life. And the way I do that is to say, God, I'm going to give myself up and I'm going to do what you want in this fast instead of what I want. Yes. And whatever that is, I'm going to be in my word more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to seek you more. How many of you know that if it's a spiritual thing, then we've got to understand. We need to get off the internet. Check your email, but you only need to check it once a day. You don't have to check it five times a day. I'm almost afraid to say the next thing. Facebook. Oh man, I got off of preaching and went to meddling now. How I many of you know you don't need to hear from everybody else? You need to hear from God? I mean, there's nothing wrong with Facebook, but how many of you know there's a time for God too? I mean, how about face to face? How about reading your Bible? In fact, when you fast, what really happens is what you're giving up is you're giving up a physical meal for a spiritual experience in God's Word. You're feeding, but you're not feeding your flesh. You're feeding your spirit man. Are you out there? Yes. 
So when you fast, you have to really understand it's, it's a physical thing, but it's a discipline to our flesh so that we may experience more spiritual things for God. Amen? And then literally in the power of God, how many of you know that, that you must prepare spiritually then? How many of you, uh, I had a, a, a member here, he, he's a guy in the church, most of you know him, you know, Ken and Rita, they went to, I believe it was uh, Central America somewhere where all the Aztec things were, and they knew they were going to be walking up these pyramids and doing hiking and getting to where they needed to go. So seven months earlier, they started, they hired a, a guy to help them work out. Because if they wouldn't have done that, and I mean, both of them lost, I don't even remember how much, even, I mean, they lost probably 30 pounds each. And they weren't big people as it was, but they wanted to be in shape because when they got there, they knew they were going to be in the back part of the country. And I don't know about you, I mean, have you ever walked up, I don't know how many of you have been, but how many of you know, in the pyramids there isn't escalades, escalators, or elevators. If you want to go up and see the top, you get to walk up. Just turn to your and say, you get to walk up. <laughs> so what they did is they prepared. So many people go into fasting, even when I ask you to corporately fast, you need to be preparing in your mind right now for this week. You need to prepare, because if you don't prepare, what happens is you get into the fast, and the moment it, your hunger pains come, or something happens where you, you, know, you don't get your sugar high, <laughs> you don't get to eat your brownies without the marijuana, <laughs> then truthfully, uh, it's sad, but, but you will get a little bit of a down. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so you have to prepare, because when that comes, and this means you're willing to pray more, read God's word, and have that power. And then lastly, you must determine what kind of fast you want to go on. How many of you know you just don't start a fast? You have to prepare what you're going to do during that fast. And not just I mean planning. I mean, are you going to give up food and something else? Or are you going to give up one meal a day? Are you going to... How many of you know you need to prepare for that? The Word really tells us that if, if, if we're going to physically fast then we got to determine what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. Because how many of you know it's breaking your daily pattern? I mean, I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, I have patterns in my life. I have things in my life that, that literally uh, I've done so long that I want to do the same thing every day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And I mean, most of us are creatures of habit. So what happens is fasting is also breaking a habit, breaking a, a routine, if you will, and allowing the Spirit of God to move. Just like I said, giving up things, giving up Facebook or whatever. But you're going to have to prepare yourself to do that. And like I said, it doesn't mean you, maybe some of you want to, and let's, let me give you a few ideas. I'm not saying you can't ever check Facebook. What I'm saying is you don't need to be on there five hours a day. Hello? Okay, you only don't need to be on there two hours a day. But I know some of you are on there eight hours a day. I mean, I see people driving down the highway checking their Facebook. It freaks me out. And we talk about drinkers. You know, I mean, come on. It's amazing. Or, you know, I know people that are on the internet. I mean, and it's great to be on the internet if you have something you want to look up and all this stuff. But how many of you know pretty... Sometimes technology is not always made up to what it's to be. And so, you know, give, give something up. Set, set the course. Uh, how long are you going to fast? What are you going to fast? Now, I mean, I'm calling this to a corporate fast, but I'm believing in my heart that this isn't the only time this year you fast. That throughout the year you fast, or uh, for a day, two, whatever the Lord tells you. But the Lord wants to have us do this on a, on a semi-regular schedule. Because supernatural things happen. In other words, I'm not saying this is the only time I call the church to a fast. And I have, and I've noticed when I do, I, have, I want to tell you, I just want to thank all of you that have came to me this week. This last week, uh, because I talked about getting a word for this year, I have been inundated 
with emails and texts and personal people coming to tell me their word. I want to thank you for that. Because that encourages my heart that you're really trying to go out and do something with the word of God that I try to give you. Because you need a word, amen? amen. If you don't have a word, I want to tell you, you're going to really, it'll be sad because you can't get something, you'll, you'll just end it right back into the same things. And how many of you know, I told one man not too long ago, I said, you know, how many of you know what real stupidity is? Yeah. It's doing the same thing thinking you're going to get different results. How many of you know that's real stupidity? We say stupid all the time, but we're not looking in a mirror. But how many of you know sometimes that's really where life is? We just keep doing the same things thinking we're going to get different results, and we don't get different results because we keep doing the same thing. And how many of you know that's what a fast can do? It can break those things in your life. Even if it's just for a day or three days, sometimes it can break literally a cycle that comes in your life. And that's why it's important to do that regularly. Because how many of you know bad things try to come into our life? How many of you know there's a lot of voices speaking to us out there? It's not just the voice of the Lord, but there's a lot of voices trying to talk to us. So we need to do that. So let me give you this in closing. There's four things I'm going to ask you to fast about because this is a corporate fast. Now you can ask for other things too, but always remember this. We can never manipulate God. You can ask for your desire, but if that is not God's desire for you, He's not going to do it. Because a lot of people ask people a lot of things, I mean the Lord, a lot of things, and really they become very selfish with their prayers. And give me this, give me that, give me, do you ever talk about let me do more God? I don't see many people say, oh Lord, please let me work harder in the church. <laughs> oh Lord, let me witness to more people. It's normally, oh God, my checkbook's empty, hallelujah. <laughs> I need help, God, help. But how many of you know you can't manipulate God? You pray for your needs, but God will answer. And you can't manipulate His will for your life. But what you can do is enforce the will of His life through praying and letting Him be God. Good preaching. And so let me close with this, if I can. Pray that God would bless our nation and that God would help America. Everybody say America. America. And let me say something to you. You know, I realize America's got a lot of problems. Amen. But one thing I also realize is I need to be praying for America. Amen. God made me an American for a reason, and I'm proud to be an American. Amen. And it's for such a time as this that I live. And if God has gotten me here at this time, and He knew me before I was in my mother's womb, then I'm here in this nation, born to this nation, and we need to care about this nation. Because all bad has to do to prevail is for good people to stop praying. And that's really true. So we need to pray for our nation. Yes, does it have its problems? Yes, does it have its weaknesses? Are there a lot of things going on? Absolutely. But aren't you proud? I said, aren't you proud to be an American? Yes. And so we need to understand that. Number two, we need to fast and pray for your family and the families of America. Ask God to bless families, even to the next generation. Yes. In other words, generational things are happening right now. There's new generations coming on. How many of you know we're not all as young as we used to be? And when you get older, how many of you would agree things move around to different? You don't look the same in the mirror. I'm going like, that's a picture of me? <laughs> and this is how vain we all are. I mean, I love this because it's so true. Do you know, you, you judge how good a picture is if you have multiple people in it, particularly how you look, yes. not how they look. Yes. <laughs> when you look at a picture, the first person you look for isn't the people in the picture. You look for you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I like that picture. Oh, they got their eyes closed. That doesn't matter. I like their picture of me. <laughs> Reality check here. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, how many of you know God wants us to leave something behind? It isn't all about us. We need to be praying about the next generation because how many of you know, I mean, I, I said to somebody not too long ago, I mean, I've been pastoring this church for over 25 years now went for, since we started it. 
And I'm not going to be here forever. I want this church, if God doesn't come back, I want this church to go on and be greater than anything I could ever do. And probably somebody from the next generation is going to pastor it. And I said, well, I won't be pastoring here all the time. And the guy goes, I can't even imagine you not being the pastor. Well, good, I'm glad. I'm flattered. But reality is, I'm going to go home to be with the Lord. I don't want to hang out here forever. I love you all. But sayonara. There's coming a day when I'm going home and I'm going to receive my crown and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so I need to be praying about that now. I can't wait till I get there. I want to be praying about the generation that's coming up because this church has a lot of young people. Young people, listen to me. You have a great destiny ahead of you. Don't give up. Our world might look dark, but you are the light in this world. And so let that light so shine before men. Pray for them. Pray for God to draw people to Bible-believing churches in Paradise, Chico, Oroville, and Butte County. Can, can I just ask, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but is anybody here for the very first time this morning? Would you raise your hand? Is anybody here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people are here for the first time today. Can you give them a hand? Pray for that. That's what we need to be praying for. The people wake up and go to a Bible. It doesn't have to be this church. Go to a Bible-believing church. Maybe this is where you fit. Maybe it isn't. But I'll tell you now, you need to be in the body of Christ. You need that encouragement. We need to know. And it starts in Jerusalem. When Jesus gave the Great Commission, he said to Jerusalem, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts. We think of all the people around the world, and that's great. But what about where you live? What about where I live? See, we start with where we live, then we expand out. And it's great to do missionary work. And I've been on mission trips, and I've been around the world. I've been on every continent in the world other than the Antarctic. And I'm not a penguin, so I don't think I'll be going there soon. <laughs> I don't think they need Jesus. But every other continent needs Jesus, amen? Come on, church, are you here? <laughs> But I also minister here, and I'm called here, and I believe my message is here. Amen. 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 But so is yours. And then lastly, pray that God would bring the finances to complete our new building. How many of you would agree we need the new building? Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you, we started work on the building again here in uh, about four months ago. More money came in last year for the building than almost any other time in the years we've been in building programs. Can you give the Lord a praise clap for that? But I believe that's because we prayed. How many ever know we need to keep praying? Because how many ever know we need to get into that building? I mean, we have about a hundred kids downstairs and upstairs that are primary kids. They need good facilities. And man, we got awesome <laughs> facilities out there for children. And I am so excited because I believe Jesus said, Suffer not the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. 